Dr. Akshay Subramanian. I'm a third year medicine resident at UCSF, categorical medicine resident. I'm currently on an inpatient wards rotation at the Parnassus Hospital. So today is my call day, 28 hour call shift. We're just getting the day started. It's about 6.30 in the morning. We're heading on our way in. So call shifts are pretty busy. We, uh, as senior residents, go into the hospital at seven in the morning and we bring new patients into the hospital from seven in the morning to around eight in the evening. So that's a little bit more than 12 hours on call. New patients can come from a number of places. Sometimes they come from the emergency room. Sometimes they come from primary care clinics who directly need to be admitted or from other specialty clinics. UCSF is unique because it's a referral center. So we often sometimes get patients from other hospitals who can't adequately care for them. So I help admit patients until eight in the evening and then I stay there overnight to make sure that they do well overnight as well. So you guys may have seen some other videos on Med School Insiders with Dr. Amit Pandey and Dr. P.D. Cass about the split between inpatient medicine and outpatient medicine. Inpatient medicine is a little bit different because we only rotate in the hospital and take care of patients in the hospital. So that's the rotation that I'm on now. So on the inpatient medicine service, I work with a big team. So that includes the attending, of course, but then also me and two interns who are the first year of medical training right out of uh, medical school. There are also two third year medical students on my team, as well as a fourth year medical student sub-intern who's basically trying to learn the job of being an intern. So it's a big team that I help to coordinate and bring all together to do our job. All right, actually, so it is now 12.30. What's been going on so far today? Yeah, so we finished rounding on some really interesting patients, set up in a good discharge, and took care of a patient, coordinated their care for them to get a specialty gastroenterology intervention. Now, you know, it's a busy call day. We're trying to sneak in that quick meal before the afternoon gets really busy. Nice. So, speaking of specialty consoles, how does that work in the hospital? Yeah, so a lot of times the subspecialty services, of which there are many for internal medicine, don't have their own service. So the patients come to the medicine service and we help to coordinate all of their care, including the subspecialty care as well. And speaking of specialties, you want to specialize yourself. So right now you're internal medicine residency, which is three years. And what are you going to do after that? Yeah, so I'm super interested in cardiology fellowship, actually. And like many internal medicine fellowships, it's an additional three years after residency. And the application process is very similar to residency match. Okay, so it's a total of six years to be a cardiologist. Three years internal medicine, three years cardiology fellowship, and then you're done. That's right, at least. It never ends. It never does, <laughs> but it's exciting, so it's all good. Awesome. All right, so what is going on for the rest of the day? Yeah, so we're sneaking in this quick meal right now. The afternoon is usually pretty busy. We're gonna start meeting some new patients pretty soon. And usually the day ends for the rest of the team sort of between seven and eight. But as a senior resident, I stay on and coordinate the care with the nurses and make sure that the patient gets safely admitted to the hospital and gets the care they need. Sometimes the night ends up busy if patients have active you know, issues going on. And sometimes it's not so busy and I get to get some sleep in. It just really all depends on what's going on with the patients. Hang on, my page is going off. All right. Looks like there's a patient in the emergency room needs to be admitted. Let's go check it out. Cool. So it's about six in the evening. We had a busy afternoon. We've admitted all the patients that we can. The rest of my team is wrapping up their work and they'll get out of here. On a normal day, I would be out of here by now as well. But since we're on call, I'm gonna stay here overnight in the hospital and make sure the patients do okay, uh, get my interns out on time, and then welcome the rest of the team back in the morning so we can take care of the patients again. So it is now the following day, Akshay is post-call, meaning that he had his call day and now he just got out of the hospital. So Akshay, what's, what's that like? How are you feeling? Yeah, you know, it's, I'm tired, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was uh, up a lot of the night, there's a patient who needed quite a bit of care last night, so I only got a couple of hours of sleep and I had to learn about all the patients too. Then, you know, I got up in the morning and had to lead the team on rounds as well and did some teaching as well because that's one of the things I'm really into. But you know, now I've been at work for 28 hours, just got home. Um, you know, just gonna get some food in my belly and go to sleep and relax a little bit. Oh yeah, man, well deserved. 
Uh, I don't want to keep you too long, so anything that you want to tell the viewers? Yeah, you know, medicine is super fun, it's busy, but you know, we see super interesting patients, we work in big teams and it's really exciting stuff and everyone's excited about what we do, so I really enjoy it. Uh, days like this, you know, I'm post-call, I had a busy night last night, but now I get to go to sleep, unwind, get up, and then I have the evening off, hang out with my girlfriend, hang out with my friends, and then go back to work tomorrow and do it all over again. So, you know, it sounds tiring, but it really is fun and it's fulfilling as well. Awesome. So third year of residency, I'm gonna finish up, then do three years of cardiology, what comes next? Have you decided what kind of practice, what kind of life you want to have after you finish your training? Good question, Kevin. I think that um, throughout medical training, we think a lot about like what kind of doctor we want to be, but not enough about what kind of life we want to lead in the end. And one of the points of advice that I might give to people who are starting this career is even before you think about like which specialty you want to do, what you're interested in, think. If you can, think long term about like what's important to you in life. Like, Is it the job? Is it operating? Is it taking care of patients? Is it doing research? Or maybe even it's like, I want to have a family. And once you have those priorities found out, you can start to devise like what your career is going to look like. So for me personally, one of the big priorities is to have a family and be there for kids and things like that. So being able to provide for them rather than having like my academic career be the top priority. I haven't quite figured out how that's going to look for me, but having those priorities mapped out kind of helps to guide that decision making. Awesome. So then like figuring out what you want long term in life helps guide you not only with, you know, academic versus private practice versus community medicine, but then even your specialty. Because doing something like neurosurgery is going to be less conducive to having quality time with your kids, for example, versus something like dermatology which or family medicine which may give you more time than neurosurgery. That's right. Yeah. So for all the pre-meds who are trying to get into medical school right now, do you have any advice in terms of med school admissions? Yeah, you know, uh, I think that a traditional route would be to do lots of undergraduate research, try to publish if possible and things like that. I personally had a slightly different route to get into medical school. I didn't love doing undergraduate research and so my emphasis was more on uh, working in the hospital, having clinical exposure, and, and kind of devising that as like a route to medical school. I think what's most important is that whatever you choose to do before medical school, just make sure that you really love it, because that's that's like really obvious to the admissions committee and be passionate about it and try to be reflective about how you grew as a person because of those experiences I think is the most important thing rather than like checking out certain things on your list. So if someone likes research by all means pursue it and if they don't then maybe pursue more clinical exposure. Exactly just find that thing that makes you click and be really uh, reflective about what that added to you as a person. Awesome. Are there any challenges that you've experienced as a resident that you weren't expecting coming in? You know um, People say that residency is hard, but I don't think that that gives justice to like how challenging it really is. Yeah. Um, I think that one of the biggest challenges is finding work-life balance, and that's true for us throughout our careers. And uh, especially in residency, one of the most important skills is not just learning the clinical experience and learning how to lead a team and potentially like having uh, productivity outside of the clinical environment. But one of the most ex important skills I think is learning how to like balance the work part of your life and the life part of your life and uh, making those priorities for yourself for sure. Awesome. Solid advice. Thanks, Lakshay. All right. Appreciate it, Kevin.